If words carry information, the voice infuses them with life and feeling. The ultimate instrument is a set of vocal cords. A sound that can both hold a tune We're over the rainbow. Your voice is as unique as your fingerprint. Can everyone improve their voice at least some? Absolutely. From Linfield to Broadway, whose voice is it anyway? You know, I like the Italian ice. You know, I like the Italian ice, Louie. And can you guess where you may have traveled with this man before? Hi, I'm Frank Oglesby, and you might know me as... This is Chronicle on WCBB Channel 5. These are all former patients of yours, current patients of yours? Yep. Dr. Steven Zytels has treated some of the most prolific voices of our generation. Cher, Julie Andrews, Adele, and rock stars. He may not be one in the traditional sense, but he is a rock star of innovation and surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital's Voice Center. Speak to us about the profound nature of the voice. The ultimate instrument is a set of vocal cords. There's only two muscle systems in the human body that have the capacity to express emotion. It's a face and a voice. When famous people face fading voices, many come here. The people whose voice gradually goes are the people who tend to have voice was a centerpiece in their life. No part of the human body sees as much collision forces and shearing stresses as those little vocal cords. To produce sound, the vocal cords must meet each other between 120 and 200 times per minute, and that takes a toll. The most common thing that people will say is that if they have lost their voice, they're in an emotional box. The inability to express emotions traps people. Zytels has helped unlock the science behind restoring the voice. He is highly regarded as a surgical innovator, having designed numerous treatments, pioneered laser procedures. One of my main goals is to reach as many human voices as possible. Now, back to our quiz off the top. Hi, I'm Frank Oglesby, and you might know me as... Here's a clue. For more than three decades, more than one million people every single day were guided by his voice. So many of us have traveled with you, even though we might not know, right? Frank Oglesby, the voice of... The T. Next stop, Park Street, Government Center. Next stop, Kendall, MIT. His commute looks a bit different these days. The father of three retired to his western Massachusetts home in 2022. Though he grew up in Newton, but be careful what or how you pronounce it around this pro. Mm -hmm. New N. <laughs> Newton. New. It's new, not new. N O O. New. New. Or Newton. Let's take you on a ride back to how one of the most recognizable voices in the city began his journey to our daily commutes. When I was 14, it's like it happened. I sounded like this at 14. His booming pipes led him to a radio station. Then, in the 80s, an internship right here at Channel 5. Cameramen, uh, engineers, they're saying, Dude, you got you you got a set of pipes on you. You should you should do this. The general manager at the station was close to giving me uh, a job. But that door would close when another one opened. But I landed a job at the T. A good fit, it would seem. His father was a driver for the MBTA. Frank would end up in marketing. When those pesky employee training videos needed an upgrade, they came to him. Hey, I heard that you sound good. Would you be interested in, in uh, voicing these videos for me? I said, sure, I'd like to give it a try. Train operators didn't want to read the announcements for stops. Right. So this was a way to eliminate that problem. I ended up recording all the red line announcements, and they were on a, an audio cassette. 
His role, of course, would expand. Red line, orange line, green line. Newton Highlands. Next stop, Wonderland. And so did his famous intonations. I, I might be at a restaurant or in a line talking to a friend, and someone might turn around and say, do I know you or you sound familiar? He says he eventually took to voice work to enhance the message. Having a nice voice isn't enough. It's uh, acting. And the better actor you are, the better you can use the instrument. A few years ago, when the T began to transition to automated announcements, Oglesby transitioned to plays, including The T, an MBTA musical, naturally, narrations, and fulfilling some interesting requests. I want you to record a message reminding my wife to make sure she eats her breakfast before she goes to work. But true to his craft, Oglesby says he is always trying to flex those chords. <laughs> Certainly a recognizable voice yes. there. Back to Dr. Zytel's. He's currently working on a vo uh, book rather about the human voice, his life, obviously researching it and mm. restoring it, and personal stories as well from a lot of his patients. And he also runs the Voice Health Institute, a nonprofit founded by patients such as Julie Andrews. And it's really all dedicated to healthy voices, voice health, and restoration. And we're going to learn a lot more about that tonight. Coming up, restoring what has been lost.